Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for your love, for your grace, for your kindness. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful month of February and all the blessings that we enjoyed. Thank you. And thank you for this blessed month of March. Thank you for teaching us the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to this very special service today. It's our global communion service for this month of March. God's word is given to us for a purpose, to lead us, to guide us, to instruct us, to train us in the things of the kingdom of God. He gave us his word to enable us see as errors the way he sees us. In fact, if you will look into the scriptures in the book of James, chapter 1 it says to us in the 22nd verse but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholded himself and God his way, and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. But also looking into the perfect law of liberty and continuing therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. It tells us God's word is like a mirror. Like a mirror. When you look into the mirror of God, you see yourself. You see what God thinks of you. You see the image that God has of you. And he wants you to have that image of yourself. So he gave us his word. So we can understand it and see as he sees. And so he tells us. 
in verse 23, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like a man who sees himself in a mirror. And when he walks away from the mirror, he forgets the manner of man that he was. And it's, it's interesting that he doesn't say the man forgot just what he looked like. He says the man forgot the kind, the type of man that he saw. So God's word doesn't just like a mirror show you your shape and your outward looks. He shows you your kind, your type of what species you are. How important that is. How important that is. That's extraordinary. Extraordinary. And so God in his word trains us, shows us how to live, shows us how to pray. And our prayer is a special kind of communication with God that helps us, builds our spirits. Because we're in a rich fellowship with the Lord. And remember, the beautiful thing that Jesus brought to the world was the possibility of fellowship with God. You don't find that in any religion. No religion offers you fellowship with God. How are they going to do it? But Jesus brought us fellowship with God. An amazing reality. Fellowship with God. Think about it. Think about it. I'd like to read to you in first epistle of St. John. Chapter 1. It says from the third verse, That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And then, go to 1 Corinthians Chapter 1. And see this beautiful verse. Verse 9. It says, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We were called under the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He brought us into fellowship with Jesus Christ. But here's another big one. In Second Peter chapter 1. Isn't it wonderful in all the books that I read to you, they're all in the first chapter? Letting you know the subject is a big subject. Big subject in the Word of God. Now, look at what he tells us here. I'm going to read 2 Peter chapter 1. Observe what he, what he says from verse 3. He says, According as his divine power hath given unto us 
all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Now look at verse, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers. Wow. Partakers. And the word that's translated partakers comes from the same root word of fellowship, koinonia. Partakers of the divine nature. Koinonos theasphysios. And that means associates of a God kind. Associates of a God kind. Meaning that we've been brought into fellowship of the divine pantheon. A heavenly pantheon. No wonder Jesus said, you're God's. Quoting the Psalms. He's brought us into fellowship with himself. So the word of God helps us build this image, this heavenly image. So we can understand who we are from God's point of view. And the purpose is so we can live that way. If you don't know who you are, you, you can't live accordingly. But once you know who you are, you can live as God wants you to live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, a couple of scriptures. Where are we on God's timetable, on God's timeline? It's important. It's important. To walk with God, you have to follow in his timeline. So you understand what God is thinking. What God is doing. And walk in sync with him. What's in God's mind? And why are we here? Our purpose, it put us here for a reason. Our purpose is to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. That's our purpose. It put us here for that. To establish and extend the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. He says the earth shall be covered with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Who's to make that happen? We are the ones. That's our job. That's our job. When Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what he was talking about. Go ye therefore. Make students of the nations. Make poopers of the nations. Establish the kingdom in all the earth. 
So he shows us his will. You know, a lot of people think that in the world, things run as God wants. But that's not true. No. If that were true, why would Jesus teach his disciples to pray and say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Why pray that way if his will is being done in the earth? We pray that way because his will is not being done in the earth and it's our responsibility to make it happen. You got a job to make it happen. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. God's will is always done in heaven. But in the earth, His will is not always done. So only His people can pray His will into manifestation. Only His people can bring His will into manifestation. You remember the man that was born blind? The word tells us about him. In St. John's Gospel chapter 9. And I'm going to read to you from verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a, blind, a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents. Think about that. He and his disciples. So this man who was born blind. His disciples in their religious thinking. They said to Jesus, Who committed the sin that this man was born blind? Was it himself? Or was it his parents? As far as they were concerned, if somebody were born blind, they must have been sin, responsible for it. So God, in his justice system, in his judicial mind, is punishing them for their sin. So which of them is God punishing? The man himself or his parents? For letting this man be born blind. See. That was their thinking. But Jesus. He says no. Neither had this man sinned. Nor his spirits. It's not any one of them. He says. But that the works of God. Should be made manifest. In him. I must work the works of him. You know, there's a punctuation, a full stop punctuation there in verse 3, which was put there through the translator's primitives. And they were wrong. The full stop should have never been there. It wasn't there in the original. They put it there. It didn't have to be there. And, and the reason is this. When you read, it says, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. No. That's not what Jesus said. Read it straight from the original. He says, But that the works of God should be made manifest in him, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. See ya? In other words, what you see in this man is not the work of God. But for the work of God to be manifest in this man, I gotta do something about it. That's what Jesus said. So the work of blindness in that man's eyes didn't come from God. So if we're going to see the work of God in the man's eyes, Jesus says, I've got to do something. I've got to do the works of him that sent me where it's day. And that's where the disciples got what Peter quoted in Acts the 10th chapter. 
in the 38th verse, look at it, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Everybody that Jesus healed was oppressed of the devil, not God. It was God who sent Jesus to go heal them. So Jesus said, I'm a, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The Father sent me. God sent me. So for the work of God to be manifest in him, I must do the work of him that sent me. And we find the one who sent him, sent him with power, anointed him with power, anointed him with the Holy Ghost. Sent him to heal. That's wonderful. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing everybody that was oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Thank you, Lord. God was with you. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, you know, in the scriptures, you want to understand the work of God, the will of the Father. You look at the words, you look at the scriptures. What's God saying? What's God saying? What is it in your country right now? What time is it? What moment is it right now? I'll tell you what season it is right now. And you got to make it real in your country. You've got to. You've got to make it real in your country. What's, what's going on in the spirit? What's God thinking? You gotta look in the spirit. You gotta look in the spirit. You gotta look in the spirit. You've got to look in the spirit. So much is happening. You know, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday this week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we have your love world specials. So get ready for it. Three days from Wednesday. So um, we've got a lot to talk about in the Word of God, and it's exciting. Now, when you look at something in the Word, there's so much here. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, he tells us when you study in the 14th chapter, he talks about this spirit of darkness, Satan who was controlling the Babylonian kingdom. What God saw in the spirit was different from what the people were seeing. The king of Babylon was being used by Satan. So when the people looked at the king of Babylon, they saw man. But when God looked at the king of Babylon, he was looking at Lucifer, who was reigning over Babylon. So what they had on the ground, 
was different from what was happening in the spirit. And so God, when you study, you got to understand when God's talking to Babylon as a country, as a nation, as a kingdom, and when he's talking to Babylon in the spirit. So God addresses Babylon in the spirit. And whatever God says to spiritual Babylon is going to happen to the Babylonian kingdom in the earth. Now, I'll give you an imagery here. And the Bible tells us how that the ark of God was captured by the Philistines. And they took it into the temple of Dagon. Now, Dagon was the, was the god of the Philistines. And this god... was um, he had a head of a, a human all right had a human head a human face hands like a man but then the rest of his body was fish So they called him the, the fish god that um, they felt was responsible for their prosperity. So they built this huge statue for Dagon. What a great temple. And so the statue of Dagon was there in the temple. And they brought the ark of God that they had captured from the Israelites. And they brought it into the temple of Dagon. Now remember, the ark of God was where the presence of God was. And if you touch the ark of God, you got into trouble. In fact, you died on the spot. You're not allowed to touch it. How could these people capture it? Why did nothing happen to them? Because the law wasn't given to them. The law wasn't given to them. So they captured it anyway. And brought it into the temple of Dagon. And set it before Dagon like, Okay, now the God of the Israelites bows before our God. So they put the ark of God. You know, the, the ark is a, is a chest with a lid on it. Alright? So, they put it there before Dagon. Uh, when they came back in the morning to find out how Dagon has been faring, especially now that they've captured the... Dagon's helped them, according to them. Dagon's helped them to capture the Ark of God. They got in there. Dagon was fallen before the Ark of God. Bowed before the Ark of God. They said, what? Who did this? Look around, couldn't find nobody. So, they said, they're not amazing that Dagon can get up. Couldn't get up by himself. They had to pick him up and set him up again. Left him there. And they came back. This time, Dagon's fallen, his hands are broken. <laughs> Dagon's destroyed before the ark of God. So, what is happening here? This is a statue. This is a box. So what's the relationship between a statue and a box? Because you see, men may have made those things. Alright? Don't forget, God got men to build the ark. So they, they built it. They built it. And it was men who built the statue of Dagon. The difference was, 
God's presence got into this one. So what happened to the other one? Was there anything in it? Absolutely. Absolutely. There was something in the other one. According to the Bible, it was a devil. A demon was in that one. So the word tells us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10. From verse 19. What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, demons, and not to God. And I would know that you should have fellowship with devils. Think about it. So when they brought sacrifices, like they brought the ark of God as a sacrifice to Dagon. And God saying in his word that the sacrifices offered to those idols were actually being offered to demons. So when they brought the ark of God, they're not seeing no spirits. They got this huge statue there an idol but he says it was a demon that was there so the sacrifices are offered to demons not to God Dagon was not a God no there is only one God Dagon was actually a demon that's what the Bible is telling us. So he uses the imagery of animals to give us an understanding of spiritual things. Like when Jesus talks about the sheep and the goats. An imagery. And then he tells us about other kinds of animals. Think about the serpent that represents the devil. The devil. So much so that when Jesus was talking about those Jews in their unbelief and fear and doubt and wickedness, he called them, he says, you generation of vipers. He called him a generation of vipers. He says, you are of your father, the devil. Because the devil is the serpent. And so he called the children of the devil a generation of vipers. And so, and so, Isaiah looks in the spirits. And sees God is about to take actions against Babylon. God's about to take actions against Babylon. God's about to judge Babylon. God's about to bring this Babylonian kingdom to an end. He's about to bring it to a close. Right after the Assyrian kingdom was Babylon. And God says, I'm preparing to wind this down. Babylon has been evil because Satan has been running it. Satan has been running it. So he says, I'm, I'm going to destroy Babylon. I'm going to bring in the Medes. I'm going to bring in an enemy. You know, Babylon was so rich. They believed they could get anything for money, with money. Anything. They were rich. 
It had become so rich. I said, oh, there's nothing that money can't buy. And nothing we can't do with money. We got money, we can do anything. So God said, I'm bringing you an adversary that will not take silver and will not take gold. Isaiah. And I'd like to read to you from the New National Version, the NIV. So I'm going to Isaiah chapter 13. So it's wonderful what God said he was going to do to this kingdom of Babylon. So he says, I'm bringing you the Medes. In the 17th verse, look what he says. See, I will stay up against them, the Medes who do not care for silver and have no delight in gold. So this is going to be a terrible adversary to Babylon. And then he says, when he takes actions against Babylon, you're going to see what the demons will do. All right? And this will be the end of Babylon. Demons will be having a field day in Babylon. Demons will be having a field day in Babylon. Look, and look at it. In verse, in verse 21. He says, I'm not going to let good things happen in Babylon anymore. But desert creatures will lie there. Jackals will fill her houses. There the owls will dwell and there the wild goats will leap about. Look at the 22nd verse. Hyenas will howl in her strongholds. Hyenas in her strongholds. You know, these strongholds are the border cities. The border cities. And then you have them also in the local areas. All right? These are strongholds. So Pioneers will be there. And jackals in her luxurious palaces. They're going to have jackals. In the luxurious palaces, what are the luxurious palaces? The palaces of the governors and the presidents. You got jackals in the luxurious palaces. Her time is at hand and her days will not be prolonged. God says, her time is at hand and I will not extend. I will not give them more time. So we see a picture. A picture, a picture of judgment on Babylon. A picture of judgment on Babylon. Where he lets the jackals run the luxurious palaces. But what's God thinking? What's he thinking? What's he thinking? What's God thinking at the moment? 
What's God thinking for the nations? What's God thinking? Oh, I want you to understand. I want you to understand what God's thinking in the in this hour. This is not that moment for so so much evil has taken place and the evil that took place for so long was because of the ignorance of God's people. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And so much evil took place for a long, long time. And God was not responsible for those things. And what God is saying is, I've got my people with more knowledge today, and I've got them fired up. 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 And, and look what God's thinking about your country. I want to show it to you. What God's thinking about your country. And once you discover what God's thinking about your country, You've got to stand for it. Watch. In Psalm 102, hear the psalmist in the prophetic voice stand by God's Spirit. In the 13th verse, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. And I'm telling you, in your country today, this is the set time for God to favor your nation. This is God's set time. And so the jackals will not be there because this is God's set time. It is God's set time. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. The set time. This is the set time. It's God's set time. And I'm telling you in your country, wherever you are, say, God, this is the moment. This is the moment. This is the moment. And God will have mercy for the nations. Because the set time, the time to favor that country, the time of God's favor is here. The set time is now. Thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. 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 It's the set time. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just thank the Lord wherever you are. Thank Him. Thank Him.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, I, would, I would say to you that one of the beautiful things that you can do when you hear God's word like this because of the time that it is in God's presence and you want to see that you want to bring your country your city your state in sync God's plan and timing. Sometimes you want to fast and pray. You know, I can show you something in the Word of God here. In Daniel chapter 9, I'm going to read from verse number 1. And I want you to follow this carefully. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So Daniel says, this prophet of God says, that he understood by the books of Jeremiah the prophet, that God had determined... 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So they were taken into captivity. The people were taken into captivity. And Jerusalem was in desolation, in ruins. And so he says, I saw in God's book, a Jeremiah the prophet, that it was supposed to be for 70 years. And he found out the time was near that this should be accomplished. So what are we going to do? Because it doesn't look like things are about to change. Everything remains as it was. The desolations of Jerusalem continue. So he says. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And you read the rest of it. He began to pray. For Jerusalem. And the people of God. He's praying for them. And that was. What led to. Fasting. And in the days of his fast. An angel of the Lord came to him. And brought him the answer. And said. Here's God's plan. And it says, Daniel, you're greatly beloved of God. From the very first day you began to pray, your voice was heard in heaven. And I was sent to bring the answer. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. It says, from the first day, I was dispatched from heaven. And then he says, here's God's plan. Yeah. 
I love it. I love it. So here's God's plan. This is God's plan. You see, they're not going to let you go easily. So, we're going to bring the whole kingdom to an end. We're going to bring everything down. He says, So, I'm going to fight. The prince of Persia. So there's a fight in the spirit. We will have to bring Persia down. And the prince of Grisha. Shall come. So there's no worry. Something's going to happen in the spirit. So think about it. Getting rid of Babylon. You bring in Persia. Through the Medes. You get rid of Persia. You bring in Grisha. For it didn't end there. This is more. After Grisha, he says Rome will come. And Rome will be broken into ten kingdoms. And those ten will form together, but they will not be very united. Iron and clay. And they cannot mix. Since there's more. In the days of those ten, mm -hmm. the God of heaven will destroy the whole thing. All of man's structure. Built. With these seven kingdoms. Everything will be brought down. And that stone. With which it is all destroyed. Will cover the whole earth. And I'm telling you. We are in the midst of God's prophetic word. And something is about to happen in our great word. We have a short time to finish the work of God. To get it done and get it done quick. Get it done quick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This month, this month of March is the month of favor. And you will walk in favor Christ, divine favor at work in your life. You are surrounded by favor everywhere, by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's your mount of favor. Lift your hands and thank Him. It's your mount of favor.
mừng tất cả mọi người đã trở lại với kênh của Bích Diễm thì hôm nay nhân dịp chủ nhật thì cháu nó rảnh rỗi thì nó chở Diễm vào thăm một cái di tích lịch sử một cái địa điểm tham quan nổi tiếng của tỉnh Quảng Nam đó là quần thể tượng đài mẹ Việt Nam anh hùng thì nhân cái dịp này thì Diễm cũng xin mời tất cả mọi người cùng à, 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 đón nghe và xem cái phong cảnh và Diễm xin gửi đến tất cả mọi người một cái bài hát về cái chủ đề quê hương của mình đó là một sáng tác nhạc của nhạc sĩ Giáp Văn Thạch thơ của nhà thơ Đỗ Trung Quân được mang tên quê hương chung khế ngọt cho con treo hai mỗi ngày quê hương là đường đi học con về dập bướm vàng bay quê hương là con diều biết Tuổi thơ con thả trên đồng Quê hương là con đò nhỏ Êm đềm khua nước ven sông Quê hương là câu tre nhỏ Mẹ về nói lá nghiêng che Quê hương là đêm trắng tỏ con treo hái mỗi ngày quê hương là đường đi học con về dập mương vàng bay quê hương là con diều biết tuổi thơ con thả trên đồng quê hương là con đò nhỏ êm đềm xua nước ven sông 